I'm Nick Snow, watching government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. The U.S.-European energy relationship has moved from multi-billion dollar projects crossing several countries' borders to smaller focused efforts which more clearly separate governmental and private sector functions, speakers suggested at a May 5th Atlantic Council discussion. More diversified energy supplies for Europe are still the main goal, they added. But development of a floating, instead of onshore, liquefied natural gas terminal off Croatia has created different opportunities, they said a day after the EU-US Energy Council's latest meeting. Since its creation in 2009, the Council has brought top European Union and US government officials together regularly to discuss common goals, including global and regional security and open, transparent, and competitive markets. In addition to using more LNG and increasing storage capacity, the strategy is to build new terminals to receive gas from the Caspian Basin, as well as Mediterranean suppliers including Egypt, Israel, and Cyprus. European Commission Director General for Energy Dominic Ristori said. We are pushing to develop new energy infrastructure for Central and Southeastern Europe, he told the Atlantic Council. At the same time, we will push for reforms in all these countries. We not only plan to fight corruption, but to push for new rules that will help all of Europe diversify. Amos Hochstein, Special Envoy and Coordinator for International Energy Affairs at the U.S. Department of State, said frequent consultations have made multi-billion dollar projects impractical. The industry and private sector move so fast that such projects become obsolete before they can be completed, he explained. The Kirk Island floating LNG terminal will matter as much to Hungary and Australia as to Croatia, Hochstein said. These projects mean that instead of spending tens of billions of dollars, we can spend less with help from the private sector and achieve a better result of gas-on-gas -gas competition. The conversation has changed, he continued. By moving to floating terminals and having off-take contracts, companies are well positioned to do more financing for the terminals. Countries can then finance the enabling infrastructure, such as putting in compressor stations and reversing pipeline flows. Ristori said, We are confronted with a changing world in the oil and electricity, as well as the gas markets. Our common responsibility in the EU and US is to consolidate these changes to our country's benefits. We should shift from a position where suppliers can control not just prices, but destinations. The U.S. has promoted the idea of a true energy union not dominated by large projects in a handful of countries, said Hochstein. This is important not just to the U.S. and EU, but also to the rest of the world. That's Watching Government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.